Esther Achar, a nutrition student at the Nutrition Academy uh, of Kenya, taking a course in nutrition and nephrology. So I'm going to present a presentation on the preventing protein energy wasting among patients with chronic kidney injuries. So this is divided into uh, five main uh, points. One, we're going to define what protein energy wasting in CKD is. We look at uh, identification of protein energy wasting, uh, some of the predisposing factor, the key markers to look for, and preventive measures. What is uh, our definition of protein energy wasting in CKD? According to the International Society for Renal Nutrition and Metabolism, this is defined as a state of decreased uh, uh, body stores of protein and energy fuels. It is said that protein energy wasting in CKD is highly associated to low quality of life and uh, poor prognosis and uh, in most cases goes unrecognized. So one of the uh, key things that we look at is its association between protein energy wasting and progression to early progression to end stage renal diseases. Second is the features of protein energy uh, wasting. So this in most cases we find them through nutrition assessment. We have different nutrition assessment tools that have been approved for use at the uh, renal, uh, various renal unit and it basically checks the nutritional status of the patients to be able to determine the type of uh, intervention. Some of the common features of uh, protein energy wasting include hypoalbuminia, low body mass index, low serum cholesterol uh, levels, insulin resistance is also uh, prominent, there's increased resting energy expenditure and in most cases inflammation is always present. So among children who are um, having chronic kidney diseases, one of the major uh, things or the indicators is a delayed or slowed growth which in most cases presents as stunting and this is because the insulin growth factors is interfered, uh, is interfered with. Cachexia is also one of the common factors or indicators that are also common among patients with protein energy wasting and this is basically the generalized loss of uh, muscle mass and the absence of subcutaneous fat. So we have various predisposing factors that uh, increase the risk of uh, protein energy wasting in this patient and um, there are multiple uh, factors which include the changes in the dietary intake, uh, dietary restrictions, poor intestinal absorption, we have inflammatory states, metabolic acidosis, the um, issue of losses during the dialysis process because during the dialysis process there's quite a number of nutrients that are lost uh, and all these factors put these patients at a risk of micronutrient deficiencies. Uh, decreased protein and energy intake uh, because of issues to do with anorexia. There's increased protein catabolism and uh, there's reduced synthesis of albumin and all this contribute to a negative nitrogen balance in these patients, hence increase, increasing muscle wasting among the patients. So all these factors are some of the factors that um, contribute to the etiology of protein energy wasting in CKD. So this is highlighted in summary in this figure where we're able to see the relationship between protein energy wasting and the various factors which include comorbidities, oxidative stress, inflammation, we have metabolic acidosis as previously mentioned, um, growth hormone uh, related factors which affect the growth especially among children and contributes highly to issues of stunting. We have insulin resistance, there's increased energy expenditure, there's a nutrient insufficiency, decreased nutrient intake because of uh, factors related to anorexia, vomiting and among other, other complaints. What are some of the key markers to check out for? One among them is metabolic dysfunction. And metabolic dysfunction, uh, this is associated with multiple physiological and metabolic disturbances. And this includes um, metabolic acidosis, accumulation of waste in the body, which uh, is called ure uremia or uremic syndromes. We have mineral bone um, Metabolism is also affected and in most cases results to mineral bone diseases. Insulin resistance is also common. There's vitamin A, vitamin D sorry, deficiency. 
uh, skeletal dysfunction and lean body mass wasting and cachexia. All these are linked to altered metabolism in these patients. We also have hormonal imbalances and hormonal imbalances, here we look at um, two main hormones. We look at uh, erythropoietin and um, parathyroid hormone. So the kidney has a function of producing um, hormone uh, erythropoietin which normally controls the uh, red blood cell production. So in these cases where patients have uh, chronic kidney in injury, the, the kidneys are not able to perform this normal function. Hence in most cases anemia occurs in these patients. We also have the thyroid function that um, CKD affects pituitary thyroid uh, axis and metabolism of the thyroid hormone. So both hyper and hypothyroidism interfere with um, the renal blood flow and also the glomerular filtration uh, rate. We have inflammation and this is mostly linked to anorexia but also malnutrition further aggravates um, inflammation. So chronic inflammation is one of the things that increases protein energy wasting and also is highly associated to occurrence of cardiovascular heart diseases. When we talk of appetite, normally a decreased glomerular filtration rate tends to affect the appetite or the food intake of these patients because in most cases um, the clearance of waste in the body is um, reduced so uremia is one of the symptoms that uh, tends to occur and one of the uh, manifestation is reduced uh, food intake or reduced appetite. There's also altered uh, bowel movement in these patients and uh, mostly presents in form of pain, constipation, uh, feeling of fullness. So this definitely interferes with the nutrient intake of these patients and further worsens the, the, the condition. Gastroparesis is also another condition that affects uh, or is common in patients with uh, CKD. And how does this affect the nutritional status? Um, there's delayed uh, emptying of food in the stomach because the stomach muscles are affected. So the patient will feel full, the patient will feel constipated, and the father contributes to malnutrition by basically reducing the dietary or nutrient intake of these patients. So how do you link all this to uh, nutrition? So of course, nutritional implication with hyperthyroidism, there's increase of uh, catabolism. And when there's increase of, in catabolism, the nutrient demand or the nutrient needs are normally increased. So if this is not met, chances of malnutrition is also high. Uh, when we talk of anorexia, talk of all these metabolic uh, related problems that these patients have, unless these are addressed, they will definitely, indirectly or directly affect the nutrient intake and the nutrient uptake the um, metabolism of the or the breakdown of the of the different nutrients when it comes to when it comes to the body how do you prevent malnutrition in ckd so simple provision of adequate calories and energy uh, intake does not effectively treat malnutrition in patients with chronic kidney disease this is for this simple reason because of the different uh, multifaceted arrangements that these patients um, have and that basically affect their nutritional status. So dealing with the comorbidities that these patients have um, end up giving someone a better outcome in the treatment of the patient. And some of these comorbidities include metabolic acidosis, we have um, gastrophagal reflux diseases, constipation among others. Also ensuring that dialysis sessions are conducted adequately become important in preventing or stopping or even correcting malnutrition among the patients. And uh, finally, ensuring the assessment of the nutritional status becomes essential for sustained um, growth and development, more so among the children. In conclusion, what are we saying? Nutrition assessment is one of the key factors that becomes important at first contact with the patient because this informs the kind of management that a patient is being put on and also it informs the outcome of the uh, treatment for our patients. Thank you.